Thank you for joining us today on Synthesis Workshop. On today's Research Spotlight episode, I'm very excited to have with us Dr. Gabriele Laudadio to share with us some of his recently published work on photocatalysis with light hydrocarbons. Gabriele did his master's at the University of Pisa, studying packed bed reactors and flow chemistry. He subsequently joined the research group of Professor Timothy Noel in Eindhoven for his PhD, where he's been investigating new applications of photochemistry and electrochemistry in flow. Following the group's move to the University of Amsterdam, he's been working as a postdoc there, and soon he'll be moving to Scripps to start a new position in the Baron Lab. Without further ado, I'll go ahead and let you get started, Gabriele. Thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you, Matthew, for your kind introduction and for inviting me to this research spotlight. It is a pleasure to share one of my latest works of my PhD in the Neural Research Group, which I will leave at the end of the year. I would like to present you a CH functionalization of light hydrocarbons using the tungstate photocatalysis in continuous flow. Selective functionalization of CH bonds of hydrocarbons is one of the most challenging reactions in organic synthesis, and among the others, volatile alkanes are perhaps the most difficult substrate to employ for this specific purpose. In fact, a hypothetical transformation would require the selective cleavage of particularly strong carbon-hydrogen bonds. Moreover, their poor solubility in common organic solvents limits the availability of these gases in the liquid reaction mixture, undermining the efficiency of the process. All these problems make their use in synthetic chemistry inaccessible, and that is also the reason why these inexpensive and abundant chemicals are mostly perceived as source of energy rather than valuable building blocks. Traditionally, Alkanes are converted to alkyl electrophiles through halogenation using chlorine or bromine at high temperature or by using UV light. This leads to an inefficient and unselective process, which requires energy-intensive purification and recycling of the reacted toxic materials. These haloalkanes can be used in important reactions, such as nucleophilic substitutions or eliminations to obtain the corresponding alkenes. They can also be transformed into organometallic reagents as powerful nucleophilic compounds that can be employed for a wide variety of processes. Despite this multi-step approach, the direct and selective activation of light hydrocarbons under mild conditions remains a challenge. To tackle this unsolved synthetic problem, we wondered if we could adopt a photochemical hydrogen atom transfer strategy to generate strong nucleophilic carbon center radicals that can be readily engaged for the formation of carbon-carbon bonds. Our idea was to use tetrabutyl ammonium decatangstate as hydrogen atom transfer photocatalyst to promote, upon irradiation with mild UV light, the hydrogen abstraction from the volatile alkanes. The nucleophilic radical could be then quenched by an electron withdrawing alkene that closes the catalytic cycle by hydrogen back donation. Because of the gaseous nature and the low solubility of light alkanes in organic solvents, we reasoned that the use of flow technology would facilitate the gas liquid decatangstate mediated process. The short length scales in microflow reactors, typically less than 1 mm of optical path, provide a homogeneous irradiation of the entire reaction medium allowing for the efficient generation of alkyl radicals. Furthermore, by increasing the pressure in the reactor through use of back pressure regulators, the gaseous alkanes can be forced into the liquid phase, increasing the odds of the desired carbon-hydrogen bond activation. Finally, flow processing of these combustible gases can be done safely in microreactors thanks to their reduced volume, and the conditions can be readily scaled. The flow setup is composed by a simple loop that is filled up with the liquid solution containing the catalyst and the radical trap and the gas, precisely delivered by a mass flow controller. As soon as the loop is filled, the six-way valve can be switched and the system is pressurized by an HPLC pump. Subsequently, the reaction mixture is pumped into the photochemical reactor, equipped with a 365 nm LED of 60 or 150 watts of power. To test if we could obtain the desired reactivity, trapping experiments with tempo were carried out. As a result, the trapped radicals could be detected by GCMS, which gave us confidence on the feasibility of the project. Notably, the hydrogen abstraction in the case of isobutane and propane showed high selectivity towards the most substituted carbon, indicating that the decatang state is able to navigate the small hydrocarbons and activate strong CH bonds in a selective fashion. 
After these encouraging results, we performed a meticulous optimization of the reaction conditions, which I will highlight with two of the most important effects that we observed during the screening of different parameters. The first one is related to the pressure. We realized that the performances of the reactor were improving together with an increment in pressure until we reached the liquefaction point of the gas, and after that, a plateau was reached. This effect can be rationalized with the fact that the availability of the light hydrocarbon in the liquid phase is maximized as soon as the gas is liquefied. The second effect is related to the catalyst loading and light intensity. High light power allowed us to carry out reactions from stop flow to continuous flow mode, boosting the kinetics and remarkably improving the selectivity of the reaction. This outcome is mainly due to the better mixing of the two immiscible phases in the continuous flow setup. With the optimized conditions in hand, we moved to the validation of the generality of the reaction. Isobutane and proper radicals were efficiently scavenged with many different electron withdrawing alkenes, such as benzylidyl malononitriles, triethyl ethylene tricarboxylates, and phenylmalamide and methylene norbornanone. In agreement with the tempo trapping experiments, a high selectivity was obtained for the terbutyl and the isopropyl derivatives respectively. When we moved to ethane and methane, we had to adjust the reaction conditions to promote their activation, since their bond dissociation energy are higher than the previous alkanes employed. For both the substrates, higher pressure is needed to liquefy the gas and slightly higher catalytic loadings were reused. With ethane, good isolated yields were obtained for a diverse set of hydroethylated compounds. With methane, though, the situation was a bit more complex. Even if traces of the desired product were already observed, competitive activation of acetonitrile took place, even if TB additi has a marked preference for the abstraction of nucleophilic hydrogens and tends to avoid dissociating electrophilic carbon-hydrogen bonds, such as those present in alpha position to the electron withdrawing functional groups. This problem could be effectively overcome by using deuterated acetonitrile as solvent, taking advantage of the isotopic effect. This modification to the original protocol allowed us to obtain synthetically useful amounts of the desired hydromethylated adducts. And with that, I would like to conclude. I hope I could convince you that mild functionalization of abundant feedstock, like gaseous alkanes, is possible if we combine chemical knowledge and technology. In this way, I believe that a new entire set of transformations impossible to realize before can be achieved. And it is truly exciting for me to say that we have just started to scratch the surface of this chemistry. I do believe that these underrated carbon syntons will be used more in the near future for even more interesting applications. Finally, I would like to thank all the co-workers in the Noel Research Group. These last years were fantastic. I had the chance to develop as a person and as a scientist, working on challenging but highly rewarding projects. I would like to thank Timothy for his guidance and his passion, which is simply contagious. He always believed in me and showed me the way to become a real scientist. I would also like to thank all the people involved in the development of this work, in particular Yu Chao Deng, who helped me a lot in finalizing the project, Klaus van der Waal for his first optimization reactions, the Photo Green Lab at the University of Pavia for the fruitful discussion, and Vaportech for providing the photochemical reactors where all the experiments were carried out. Finally, I would thank you once more for attending and Matthew for the opportunity to contribute to this amazing format. Thank you for tuning in for another Research Spotlight episode, and thank you very much to Gabriele for joining us today. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to reach out. To support this initiative, help us out by telling your peers about this resource. Check our webpage, synthesis-workshop.com, or follow us on Twitter to stay up to date. See you all next time.